Stephanie, is is that right? Yeah. Hello? I can't hear. Yes. Oh, there you Hi. are. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Come on. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. yeah. Can you hear us? There's there's so a four there's, there's a there's a delay, so it's best to turn okay, your TV. Well, it's best to turn your TV down and just listen to the phone because there's a delay. All right. Is that better? Yes. yes. Great. All right. Your question was is how do you know that God is alive and that Jesus Jesus is the Son of God and that He lives? Is that one of your questions? Sure. Sure. Is Jesus well, still alive or not? Of course he is. Where does the sun come from? Where does the air we breathe come okay, from? Okay, so it Jesus didn't die, right? So did, he didn't he die. Did create your sin. that things that we cannot explain? Well, what do you mean? How does a man that what? you cannot explain? You said, "I am that I am," well, right? Uh, no, you, you asked. You asked first, where does the sun come from and the oxygen that we breathe, right. um, and that this is stuff that can't be created by man, and that's why you believe that it's God. You know that it is. He, he no, said, no, no. "I am that I am." No, oh, we, you know we, that the sun exists and the air that we breathe every day exists. Right. Someone had to do it. No, with, not uh, a someone. Not a someone. It has to exist for some explanation. There has to be a reason behind it. There's an that explanation, I'm telling you. In the Bible it says, I am that I am. He okay. is who he is. Uh, okay, and what reason do you have to believe that that's accurate? Because the reason that I believe is that God says we worship him in spirit. How do you know what God truth. says? How do you know what God says? Because it says it's in the it says it in the Bible. So you're saying that you know the Bible's true because the Bible says it's true. I know the Bible that is true because I've had an experience. With ah, God. what experience? My own personal personal experience. Okay, what experience? Jesus, Jesus Christ, well, and when you met Him yourself, mm -hmm. you would know without a shadow of a doubt that He lived. Okay, so he lives his spirit. Uh, okay, spirit. so hang hang on because uh, I I have a couple questions that that hopefully you can clear up. One, um, I used to be a Christian, and I had some experiences that I thought were similar to other people's, but evidently they weren't. Um, mm -hmm. If Jesus actually exists and loves me and cares for me, why wouldn't he demonstrate himself to me in the same way that he's demonstrated himself to you? Because you probably didn't ask. And he probably did show you different ways, but you were just ignoring them. Really? Like what? what? What kind of ways would he show himself that I'd ignore? Tell me some experiences you had to make you turn away from Christ. You said you once were. My, and that's one thing there that you're, right? that you're saying there. See, now, the thing is... Another thing, you don't always have good times. You have bad times, trials and tribulations right? and all of that. I, I understand that. What I'm, what I'm saying is you're saying that that you know the Bible's true because the Bible says so and because you Jesus has demonstrated himself to you. Of course. And why wouldn't Jesus demonstrate himself to everybody else? He does. We just don't recognize How? it. Okay. How we does choose. he do this? We choose. No, no, no. You do not choose what you believe. But I'm, what I'm asking is, how you does he demonstrate this? You choose to turn your heart no, away how from God. How does he demonstrate this? How does he? Through his Holy Spirit. Okay. Spirit that doesn't tell me anything. Have you ever experienced the Holy Spirit? <laughs> um, there were things that I used to think were experiences of the Holy Spirit, and I no longer accept that. But, okay, let me ask you. Did you attend a church? Yes. What kind of church? Uh, Southern Baptist. Southern Baptist? I, I was also in Pentecostal churches, Church of Christ, a number of different ones. And, and, oh, and, and, okay. okay. Okay? Well, that's the reason I know, because I know whether I go through the good times, the bad times, I know he's there, and I know that he's all-knowing. And I just, I just really believe that. Without, you know, okay, sometimes so, we get, so, we so have you doubts. Just feel it. We're human. So you we have just, doubts, but God did not God say damn. that we were not going to have doubts. So, so you just feel it and believe that it's true, and that's good enough. Oh yeah, that okay. is good enough because, like so, I said, one one day, each person will have that personal experience with Him, and you're going to either receive it. Okay, do or you think that you can turn away when something bad I, I happens in your life? I understand life. all and that. This is, want to I, I understand this isn't just an opportunity to preach. I'm asking for evidence. Now, evidence. It, hang, hang, please let me finish. Okay. You believe all this because you feel it. Now, is this anything that you think is demonstrable to anybody else? In other words, you have a personal experience that justifies your belief. You believe it sincerely because of your personal experience. Do you think anybody else should believe th until they have a personal experience? Should they believe? 
Sure, they should believe because, like I said, you know. So, so you think? You know, okay. When you think about the reasoning that we have, right or wrong, that's God there. It is, and that's in any of us. How, how, any of what us. makes you think we that know that's God? That we have to make a choice between right or wrong. And what makes that's you God. think that that's God? It's, that's there. He puts that in you to make the choices between right or wrong. You don't put those decisions within into your mind, I, I wanna, your way of thinking. No, I want to. I want to go back to what you answered, and that was you said that, in in fact, despite if somebody didn't have a personal experience to prove this, they should still believe. And your justification for this is that. Oh, they, they, right they and wrong believe, exists. Would pray that they would, right. would okay, can I get a damn sentence out? <laughs> your justification for this That's is that. That's what Jesus said for us to do. Pray for them. Okay, you know pray. what? Until you demonstrate exists, I don't give a damn what Jesus says. There's absolutely. The, the justification that you're using is something that could only possibly be personal. I've had some personal experience, and this justifies my belief. I'm fine with that. Your belief, as far as I can tell, it, it's justified. Uh, I think you're incorrect about what you're calling personal experience because you can't really identify it. Oh, it's just a feeling, or he speaks to me, or right and wrong, or the fact that the sun and everything else exists. No, there's an explanation for why the sun exists, and it's all naturalistic and scientific. There's no reason to hypothesize that there's any sort of supernatural creator or, or force behind it. What you're basically saying is this all feels good to you, you have plenty of things that you can't explain, and rather than investigating them and trying to find an explanation, you're happier just believing that it's all God and Jesus. Yeah, because it keeps you comfortable when things get bad. Okay, fine. I'm asking why that should be justified to anybody else. And your point was that everyone should believe this, even if they haven't had a personal experience, simply based on the existence of right and wrong. Well, guess what? Right and wrong don't exist. They're labels that we apply to phenomena. And the idea of what qualifies as right or what qualifies as wrong has changed over time. And you don't have to go any further than the book that you idolize to demonstrate this. There are plenty of things that used to be considered wrong or right, which now are either right or wrong. Slavery is a fine Slavery. Idea. Your Bible advocates slavery. And while it sounded to me, and I, I apologize if I'm getting this wrong, but there are certain dialects. I'm betting that you're African American, and I'm betting that your ancestors probably, based on the odds, and I could be wrong, were originally in the United States as slaves. Slavery is advocated by the Bible, and Christians used those passages in the Bible to support slavery. You believe that this God exists. He loves you, and yet you also believe that he advocated and supported slavery. It's in the book, the book that you claim is true because it's true, or at least because you feel like it's true. That's not evidence that applies to anybody else. It's irrational. There's no, it's fine for you to believe this. I wish you didn't. I wish you embraced reality. And I really hope that you don't make really big life decisions based on such flimsy and logically flawed evidence. But if you're, you're entitled to believe whatever you want. But when you say other people should also believe, even despite the miraculous personal revelation that you have, now you're, now you're, you're making a claim that's not only unjustified, it's harmful. Nobody should believe until they've either been, it's either been demonstrated through evidence, reasoned argument, personal experience. Some of those are more questionable than others, especially personal experience. Anybody who's ever seen a magic trick done can tell you that personal experience, it's a little flaky on occasion. But. So I don't know who's actually on line one or not. Is it 